Welcome, welcome, everybody. I believe that today is going to go much better than yesterday. So welcome to the three-day workshop, It's Coming Up Roses. And this is a three-day mixed media workshop teaching you about how to kind of really go from start to finish, how to go from start to finish on an art journal page, a canvas, like it could really be anything. We're kind of working on paper and working with a lot of different mixed media, but could it, it could be really any kind of artwork. So kind of going from start to finish yesterday, let me know if you were here, because if you were here yesterday for the first 20 minutes, we were having some tech issues. So I see a few of you on. If you can just let me know in the comments if everything is good today. Are you hearing any kind of echo, any kind of reverb, any kind of static, anything like that? Hey there, Jamie. I see she is showing up here with her little smiley face afterwards. I would love to know if you're hearing any of that because I believe today I got it all set up before we went live and I don't hear any static. I don't hear any echo from my phone over here. And I think that we are all good. So, hey there, Cindy. I see her saying hi. Let me know also where you are watching today. I am streaming to three different places. Oh, good. Jamie says, looks good. Sounds good. Awesome. We're going to start on time today. So, are you watching on Creations of Studio 39, which is my business page, and up in that corner over there, it it shows my logo, or are you watching inside of Art Journaling 101, because I'm also streaming over there, or I am also streaming to YouTube. I do have a YouTube channel. I put some videos over there. Anytime that I'm kind of streaming like this, it makes it easy to put it over there too. So Jamie says that she's watching on my business page on Creations of Studio 39, that makes it easy if you would like to tell anyone about this video. That is a public page. So you can, you know, kind of go around. And this person says they're watching an art journaling. And I cannot see the name. I don't know if that's because you haven't registered on StreamYard or if it's because it is a private group. I That that could be. And it's, it's not showing um, because I'm on a, you know, when I go back after the video, I did try to go back after all of the comments, all of the the um, takeaways and everything from yesterday, and I do see the names there. So I'm not able to see it right here. So several people watching cre from Creations of Studio 39. I see Cindy and Linda, Yvonne from Creations of Studio 39. Hey there, Jeannie. I was just asking people if they were watching from the business page, Creations of Studio 39, the Art Journaling 101, or if you're watching on YouTube, potentially. So, hey there, Sandy. Hi, Tracy. Janet, if you were asking where I am from, or if you're just asking kind of general in the, the comments, which I would love to know. I saw somebody from Fort Worth. I'm going to be there in about two weeks. Let's say Thursday, two weeks from today, I will be in that Fort Worth area. So Sandy says she's also watching from um, Creations of Studio 39. But I live east of Cincinnati, Ohio. So that's where I am. So yesterday, once we did get started, once we were um, past all of the tech issues of the echoing, you guys, I was so determined to stick with trying to figure out. It took me about I think it was at the 20 minute mark. But what I finally realized was there was two of me. There, there was two of me in StreamYard and I had another window opened up and that's where it was it was echoing from. So stuck with it, figured it out. And I believe that we had a fun time doing some background pages or yesterday we called them pretty painted papers, right? So this is my pink one from yesterday. Tell me if you were here yesterday and thank you, Linda. She says, I stuck with it like a champ. <laughs> I was just so determined, so persistent. Sometimes that's what it takes to, you know, to do what it is that you want to do, right? Tell me if you were here yesterday. I saw so many people in Art Journaling 101 posting their 
painted papers, which were so, so fun to see. And I actually have started working on my green paper, which I will show you in a minute. But let me know if you enjoyed the process yesterday, because there were so many takeaways. So many takeaways from people that were saying that it was very freeing, that it was nice to just paint. It was nice to not have a particular um, subject, right? That you were like trying to paint on there. So, oh, this person, it says Facebook user, but you just started watching. Their, oh, no problem, because you can go back and watch the replay here. You can watch the replay in Art Journaling 101, or you can go to the YouTube channel. So, oh, good. Cindy says that she watched and she finished the paintings. Well, if you were here yesterday, I gave a challenge. There were three parts actually to the challenge. One was to say your takeaway on the video. The second thing was to post your picture inside of Art Journaling 101, because that's where if you are not in there, that's where we're kind of, um, that's the community where we're kind of sharing everything. Just put AJ101 in the comments and I will make sure and get you that link so that you can watch the replay so that you can join in on the challenge. But I asked everybody who was participating in the challenge because there was a prize. And I do have prizes today too. For those of you who are showing up here live, I have prizes and another prize for a challenge that I will give to you at the end. But the um, hashtag for yesterday, if anybody can put that in the comments, because it will be very similar for today's, it was hashtag C-U-R for coming up roses. And I can thank Jeannie here, Jeannie who is watching live. She was the one who mentioned that. And I really like that name. So thank you, Jeannie, for the name of this workshop. Make sure and give credit to her. But that C-U-R is the hashtag to be able to use. And then we use day one. So today will be hashtag C-U-R day two. And that's what today's will be. So what I want to do before we get started today and before I kind of show you about a focal point and how to create a focal point in your artwork, why you want to do that, why it's important, how to do that, I want to go ahead and tell you the winner. And out of all of the people who posted yesterday, and I know there were some more people, you can feel free to go ahead and post those in there because in Art Journaling 101, if you click on that hashtag, C-U-R day one, you will see the entire list of everyone's painted papers. And that's so fun to be able to see all of those listed together. And that's why I create those hashtags to make it really fun to be able to go in and see everybody's. So even if you're watching today and you just found out about this workshop, you, you know, didn't get to participate yesterday for whatever reason, you can still go into Art Journaling 101 and post those because then when someone's looking for inspiration and they click on that hashtag, they will still see all of those painted papers. So what I did is I just, I just pulled up that list and I just picked the ninth person actually, because the number three and the number nine are um, pretty significant to me, as you can tell by my business name of Studio 39 in there. I picked number nine. And I picked that after three o'clock today because you had until three o'clock so that I could pick a winner and write it down and have that ready for today. And I picked a winner just randomly. I did not pick who was ever the best one because to me, the success of yesterday was that you, that you had two papers that you painted. There was no right or wrong. There was not better than someone else. There was no judging of any of those. I tried to go through and make comments on the ones that were in there because they were all so unique. And I was trying to point out some different things in those, but it was just a random pick. So I'm going to go ahead and announce 
And I do not think that I've seen this person yet. Oh, I see another Facebook user that I don't know if you're watching an art journaling 101, but I can't see your name. It could be because you have not registered with um, StreamYard, which is what I am using to um, broadcast this video. But if you go up to the top of the video, it'll ask you to give permission to StreamYard. And I know yesterday Jamie was on and she did that and came back in and it showed her name. So you can you can try that. Oh, I see Diane popping on. Oh, good. Yvonne, thank you for putting that. Um, see you are day two. That will be the hash, hashtag for. Um, I did. Jeannie, I did really like that name. So thank you for um, helping me think of that name and come up with that. So. Let me go ahead. I um, I have the name over here and I just want to make sure that I'm reading the right one. The name for today. Oh, and by the way, I mentioned yesterday the, the prize that I'm giving away while we're live are some Happy Mail envelopes. So I have three more today and I'm noticing I don't have my little um, uh, post-it notes on there. So I need to make sure that I, I write the names down and let me get a pen here. But when I pick from the challenge today, I'm giving away a $10 Amazon gift card. So that is what I'm giving away if you participate in the challenge and then I draw your name. So you're getting put into there and you are, um, you know, just entered in. No, I'm not choosing one that's best. I'm just, it's very random. So today's winner is Renee Pollock. So Renee was here yesterday and she was very excited and she posted her pages in there. And today, Renee, it was wrong. Renee is going to get an Amazon $10 gift card. So Renee, I believe that I have your email, but if you email me at creations of studio 39 at gmail.com, I will make sure and have your email and then I will send that gift card to you. So yes, I see people congratulating Renee and, um, Oh, Jamie, I see. So you're originally in art journaling, never. Oh, that's how it was. So I think it might have something to do with maybe being in the art journaling 101. It's not showing up out here. So I think that might be, uh, that might be it. So very good. So Renee is the winner from yesterday, but I do have three people today that I'm going to be giving on here live. And I do have another challenge with another prize for the end of today. So today we're talking about a focal point. Tell me in the comments there what you believe a focal point is. What do you feel like, how would you describe a focal point in a piece of artwork? I'm going to go ahead and take a drink of water. I cannot see your name here, but hello. <laughs> so, so tell me what you believe a focal point is. And if you've never heard maybe that term... Um, you know, maybe, maybe you're, you're still, you're learning, you're here to learn what a focal point is. So, um, Jeannie is the first one that I was able to see here. So Jeannie, I'm going to go ahead and send you the first happy mail envelope here. And I will just write your name down. So congratulations to Jeannie main object that draws your eye out, where your eye goes to, the main subject. Oh, hey there, Noreen. She said where your eye goes to, the main object, the main subject. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, you guys are all like right on it. It's it's what you focus on, right? It's right in the name. It's the focal point. It's, it's what your eye focuses on. We're going to be talking about the focal point today. And I have made it very easy for you for this one because we did the background papers yesterday and today we're going to do the focal point, which is the rose. Now, if you got my email or if you were in Art Journaling 101, you have this resource guide that you can download. If you were in Art Journaling 101, you also have, I have another one over on the printer that I didn't bring over. 
you have some tracers of roses. And these are the focal point. This is what we're gonna use for the focal point. And you can see, I will show you this one that I cut out here. We're gonna use this tracer in two different ways because yesterday we did two papers. So Jeannie says, thank you, whoopee. <laughs> That's awesome. So we're gonna use the two piece of paper and do two um, ways to use the image on here as the focal point. And I'm going to talk to you about the different ways to do that. You know, yesterday, I um, I didn't really mention too much about, like, why, why would you show up to this workshop and why would you listen to me teaching you about this art journaling and start to finish creating a page and things like that. And I don't mention this a whole lot on my videos when I'm, you know, teaching, doing a tutorial, but I actually do have a degree. I, I have two degrees. So I have an art education degree, which means that I have gone through four plus years and all kinds of different classes and I hear random noises, all kinds of classes and went through and studied and um, trained and learned how to teach art. So I do have that background and I actually do have my master's in art education. So when I talk about focal point, I, I actually know about how to create a focal point. And so I, I know it from being taught, but I also know it because I practice. And I, I think that there's a real difference in just taking in knowledge and actually doing and practicing so that you learn it. And I will just say that today I'm going to teach you some different ways to create a focal point. They might not be something that you've ever heard of before. So it's going to be new knowledge and it might be things that you've never ever practiced before. So it's going to be new in that way too. And I would just say right now, if either one of those are true, I want you to just think of this as practice. I want you to think of this as an experiment, as a way to learn. Because one of the ways, well, I'm going to show you several different ways to create a focal point. But one of the ways to, um, to do that is... I'm going to say in a, um, a positive way, because the tracer that I showed, you know, we're going to use this focal point, this rose that I cut out. And the other way is kind of like in a negative um, way of creating a focal point. So I'm going to explain to you kind of those two different ways. So if somebody wants to put that in the comments, like positive and negative. Today is going to be a lot of teaching because that's what I love to do. I love to like pass on the information so that you can implement, so that you can have better results in your artwork. And a focal point, the reason that we want a focal point is because we want our artwork to focus on what the viewer sees. We want to create interest because the, the, the idea behind creating artwork, definitely for ourselves, definitely there's benefit to that, there's value to that, but it's meant to be seen. So that means there's a viewer, there's someone viewing your artwork. And that focal point is what draws them in. It gets them interested. And there are actually seven different ways, main ways, that you can do that because they are using the elements of art. Tell me in the comments if you are familiar at all with the elements of art. Do you know what any of the elements of art are? Have you ever heard that term before? I hope that you guys cannot hear that. <laughs> I knew that I was starting to hear like some different sounds and um, I hear my husband vacuuming. So hopefully you cannot hear hear that through the computer. But 
Hey there, Tammy. So Tammy says, yep, I've heard of the elements of art. That's because Tammy is also a fellow art teacher. She um, has a definite way of teaching. So Yvonne says it is the very first time that she has heard this. Well, that is great because you will get an education. And I'll tell you what, Yvonne, I'm going to go ahead and give you the second happy mail envelope just for admitting that this is a brand new idea to you. This is something brand new that you're going to be learning about the elements of art. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And as I'm showing you the two papers, I will kind of go through some of these different ways that you can create a focal point. So, oh, you're welcome. Oh, good, good, good. Yep. There's going to be all kinds of fun stuff in there. Oh, Sandy's going to list them out for us. And then we're gonna we're gonna learn how to. She's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She's got all seven there. Those are the elements of art. And we're gonna go through a couple of those different ones. But if you want to refer to what Sandy just said right there, those are the seven different elements of art. They are the elements that you start with and you use when you're creating your art. So. Does anybody remember yesterday when we painted the papers, what we started with? What did we start? Oh, you know what? Before I, I tell you about the focal point, there was a technique that I wanted to teach to you yesterday, and I actually did use it on one of my examples today. So I wanted to teach this to you, and it involves using some packing tape. So Tracy says we use words. Yes, there are words underneath here that were my intention. And from start to finish, the very first thing that I started with was my intention. My intention of how I wanted to show up to my artwork that day, thinking about roses, what that means to me, memories that I might have around roses. That is the writing that's on there. Oh, good. Sandy says she learned about the elements like years ago. That's awesome. So I'm going to show you a quick technique with packing tape. You could do this with um, any kind of tape, any kind of transparent tape, like scotch tape. I like the packing tape because it's wider. And I'm actually, I'm going to show you how to um, cut out from the packing tape some leaves. So this is a little piece of packing tape that I did in pinks. And this is the piece that I did in green. Maybe I'll show it to you. I don't know if maybe you'll be able to see it. Um, there we go. Maybe it'll focus on there. So that's my green one on the packing tape that I cut out some leaves from. So this is the, the shiny side of the packing tape. And this is the side that has the paint on there. This is such a fun technique because it has that transparent quality. So let me show you really quickly because in that way it'll be drying how I did the packing tape little technique here. I have, you guys ever go to the Dollar Tree? This is a um, cutting board. At the Dollar Tree, they have a package of two cutting boards together. And they're just these thin pieces of plastic. And I will use these a lot of times for um, putting my paint on. And I'll use them to lay down on my table. And um, Tammy, you never go to the Dollar Tree? <laughs> There's so many things that you can use for your artwork at the Dollar Tree. So I have one right around the corner. I was just there yesterday <laughs> so, before the video. I use this to, obviously you can see for a palette there. And what I'm going to do is, or sometimes I just use it as a backing behind my paper. I'm going to do a piece of packing tape with some green for the leaves. And I have some green paint. I have that fun green. If you did not see this thermal green neon yesterday, so, so fun. And I will probably use, do I have, 
yeah, this one's more of a, I will probably use this Distress Oxide Spray, which is kind of fun. So, Avon says it looks like she needs to make a trip to the Dollar Tree. These these work really well, and I just I just kind of like them. Now, the technique that I'm going to show to you is very similar to some of the things that you can do on a jelly press. So, tell me in the comments if you have ever heard of a jelly press and um, if you've ever used one. So. Hey, I cannot see who this is, but hello, I will be able to see your name after the video. <laughs> and I have another one. I'm guessing that some of you are probably watching from Art Journaling 101, and that's why I can't see your name. So Noreen says she's never heard. Oh, th this Facebook user it went before I, um, she's never heard of a jelly press. So jelly, I believe is a brand name, not a brand name, a um, a trademark name, and it's G-E-L-L-I. And I actually have a jelly press that I've I've done before on my live videos. And it's it's like gelatin, right? Like it's it's flexible and you can do all kinds of pretty painted papers with a jelly press. Talk about being addicting. I have it just like stuck over there on my wall. So the technique that I'm going to show you today, you can do very similar things with this. You can use a piece of plastic from the Dollar Tree. There's actually two of them that come in a package and you can do very similar techniques. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do a couple of, I think I'm just going to do one couple little dots of this um, thermal green. And I'm going to do some a dot of the dark green. And then I'm going to use this Distress Oxide. And here's a tip when you're using packing tape. Hopefully this is not too loud. Oh, good. Oh, Colette says she used a jelly press at an art retreat. That sounds fun. Okay, I'm just gonna pull off a little, a little piece of packing tape. And here's a little trick that I will show you because the packing tape is really thin, right? And sometimes it will stick right back on to itself. So I'm going to I try not to pull off too much at a time because it's already like sticking back to itself. So I just have a little piece there. <laughs> but here's what I wanted to show you. The very end of the packing tape here, I fold it over. I just fold over like a little piece of that. And that way I can, I can get the packing tape back off there. Cause I just, that really is difficult and frustrating if you can't get the packing tape back off. Okay. So obviously my packing tape is very sticky. So on the sticky side down, I am going to press the packing tape onto this inexpensive Dollar Tree plastic. And I'm just going to start moving the paint around. You can use a backing paper. So if I just wanted to use... You know, sometimes I'll just have like scrap paper from copies that didn't, didn't, you know, so I can put a backing paper down and I could spread that. Sometimes I like to see the paint, so I don't do that. And then I will lift it up. And so now where that paint is, it's not sticky anymore. So then I'm just going to keep moving that around. And you can see that that was way more paint than I actually needed. Now with the jelly press, you can do other things. This is just a very inexpensive idea of doing a jelly press. So I'm just gonna keep pressing that on there. I, I know this corner needs a little bit. And so now I have this piece of 
packing tape with paint on it and I'm gonna let it dry. And I'll show you the leaves that we're gonna do with that. Now I still have some paint over here and I will show you what I do with that. And this is kind of what you do on a jelly press is you, <laughs> Nancy says fun and messy, yep. <laughs> so yeah, the spray ink is a distress um, spray and it, it oxidizes with the air and it just creates like some really cool effects. I'm going to take some other paper that I have and I'm going to lift up the rest of this paint. So it's another way of creating pretty papers because I don't want to waste this paint now that's down on my piece of plastic here, right? Oh, and look at that. I use the side that has the lines on it because I wasn't paying attention. Okay. And what that does is it kind of cleans off my piece of plastic here too. So now I have this fun piece of paper and you can see it picked up some of those pieces, those other pieces of color on there. So that's always fun too. Okay. Now I want to show you some other techniques with the papers that we did yesterday. I'm going to start with this pink background and I'm going to use my old credit card. You can use an old driver's license. You can use a piece of cardboard. You can use a palette knife. I just like this look and this technique more than I like using a brush. You could use a brush too, but I'm going to show you this particular technique. And I'm going to use the tracer with this flower on here. So I'm going to start with the simpler flower, which is the rosebud. And I'm going to trace that one. And... I have a lot of things over here on my table. Let me just tell you. I'm gonna use a piece of carbon paper to trace it. Okay, so here is one of the things that you want to learn about creating a focal point. Most of the time, you do not want a focal point right in the middle of the paper. You actually want the focal point. I made up a little, a little thing here if I can find it to show you. You want the focal point to be, you want it to be off centered. And I had a little grid that I was going to show you that I might have to just draw out for you because I don't, I don't know where I went now. Look at that. I don't have the sound. I don't have the echo, but I cannot find my little grid that I just made. Oh. I thought I was all set up and so prepared, but I can't find it. Oh, here it is. Here it is. It I, I got, I found it. I found it. Okay. Here's my little grid that I made. I made this from a piece of plastic. It can be a piece. I think I actually got these from inside a canvas pack. You can see it better when I put it on there. Um, I think Hobby Lobby, if you get canvas packs from Hobby Lobby, like the 16 by 20, they put a piece of acetate and that's what this is from. So I save those and I'll do different things. You could use this acetate in the same way that I use that Dollar Tree cutting board. So I just wanted to show you when you're creating a focal point where your eye goes to first, you, you gave the comments in there about a focal point is it's our way of getting the viewer looking at our artwork and focusing on one area. Oh, I can't tell who that is, but somebody there says they've made a grid like this. Awesome. So here is a little trick to create a focal point is by putting the focal point in one of the intersections. So see where these lines, so if you divide up your paper into thirds, horizontally and vertically, in one of these intersections, that's where you put your focal point instead of right in the middle. So if I put my focal point in the top left, the top right, the bottom left, or the bottom right, that is going to create a more interesting 
because there's a little there's a little tension. There's a little tension because it's not right in the middle. It's it's a little more unpredictable. It's a little bit more um, just it creates more interest. So I'm going to put the the little rosebud that I have. I'm going to put it kind of like where the rosebud is going to be like up in this corner right here. And I'm going to put it at an angle. So I'm going to create that angle that I want my viewer to look at my artwork is going to be kind of going because then that carries their eye across the entire paper, canvas, piece of wood, you know, whatever it is that you're using instead of putting it just straight up and down. So I'm going to use my carbon paper. <laughs> I don't know what this, I don't know if you can see that on this carbon paper, there's this like creature. I don't know what that is, where that's from. I'm going to put my carbon paper down here and I'm going to just kind of put my rose in this direction. And I'm going to use a stylus which I also get from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna use the finer point on this one. And I'll just start with the spiral here. If you do not have carbon paper, you can also color on the back of your tracer here. And when you trace over it on the front, then the pencil will, um, Oh, does any, I see somebody said lost sound. Is anybody else not able to hear? Hey there, Deb. Let me know if you're able to hear. Maybe that is just um, this person was saying that they lost the sound. Sometimes if you go out and come back in. Oh, there's an ant crawling around on my table. Oh, okay. Somebody else says they can still hear. Oh, hey, there's my mom popping on. You guys, everybody say hi to my mom there. <laughs> so, okay, good. But if you don't have a piece of carbon paper, you can use the pencil and trace it. And I mean, you could draw it on your on there yourself too. Okay, good. Gwen says you can hear fine. And then that way you can use this piece of paper again. So this, I could have used my thicker end. Can you see the, the lines on there? There's a little spiral and kind of goes down in that order. And then let me show you the one that I did. So you can kind of see like where we're headed. Are you a big picture kind of person? I always like to kind of see the big picture and then I can like work my way from there. And, um, and kind of go that way. So this is the one, if you saw the pink paper that I showed yesterday that I had already done inside of a journal, that was the one that I used. So let me show you from this where I trace it on here. This is the rose that I did. So I'm gonna show you how to do this background. I'm gonna show you how to do some of the shading in the flower and the rose and the rosebud. And I want to show you these leaves are that packing tape. These leaves are the packing tape that I did. And I actually cut the pieces out already from the packing tape and um, the one that I had made yesterday. So I'm going to show you the background, the rose and the leaves on there. And the other one that I've started is with the green piece of paper. So this was the pink in the background. So I'm going to use this one and do the pink. And then for, and this is what I would consider the negative. This is the negative way of creating a focal point. In other words, I, I, when, when a sculptor thinks about this, they're carving away, they're carving away what wasn't like, what's not the focal point. And that's what I'm going to be doing here. We're just going to be doing it with a credit card instead of 
like carving away the marble. This is the other one that I'm working on that I'm going to show to you about using the positive. This is actually the cut out rows that I used here. So I'm going to show you how I did that one. Let me know in the comments if you are working with me. Let me know if you're painting along with me today. Like, do you have your papers from yesterday, your pink and your green papers? And tell me if you are working along with me today. Oh, good. Tracy said she is working with me. Noreen says yes. Linda says yes. Deb's going to paint later. That's awesome. Oh, catching up later. That's fine. Cindy says just watching. Sometimes I have to just watch at the beginning first. And this is, you know, a little bit more. So <laughs> Nancy says her space is cramped. Oh, Shelly says she's traveling. Shelly, where are you headed? That's fun. Oh, hey there, Sylvia. I'm glad that you typed your name in there because I couldn't see your name in there. Oh, very good. Okay. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use a palette. There's my little foam. Another thing that I get from the Dollar Tree. These are, I don't know why, but for some reason I like these little rectangular palettes more than I like a foam round plate. So. Oh, Shelly's going home from Branson. That's fun. Very good. I've never been to Branson. Okay, on this one, I'm using the blue is what I use in the background. You could use whatever color you wanted. You could use some purple. You could use some yellow. You could use the only color that I wouldn't use is probably green because we're going to be doing the leaves in green. I like the blue, just, you know, kind of blue sky. So I took some blue, true blue paint. You don't need very much at all. Just like a little, a little, a little dot. I just put like a little dot on there. And then I did some white. I'll show you my palette underneath here. And just a little bit of white. And I kind of put them right side by side. And if you like the scraping yesterday, I think you're going to love this part. So I just have my Starbucks used up credit card, gift card. You know. And I'm going to do on this pink piece of paper, just like I did with this blue on here. Let me see if I can put... I'm going to do it sideways so you can see what I'm doing on my palette and what I'm doing on my paper here. So I'm using the end of the credit card and I'm going to kind of go into both and just have like a little bit of paint on there. A little bit of white, a little bit of blue. So I have a little bit of both on there. And I'm going to start kind of along the stem and I'm going to go right up to it, and then I'm just going to scrape. And you start to get all of these fun little textures on the paper, especially if you have some paint kind of down in here. And I will just go back into that. And I kind of just stuck to one side. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of carving away the focal point. And even when I get into some little tiny spaces down in here, I just kind of keep moving that credit card. And maybe I'll just get a little bit of paint, you know, so I'm controlling it. Now, we're going to be doing other things with the rose. And tomorrow is going to be, not tomorrow, Saturday is day three and we're going to be kind of finishing up. So don't be too concerned if you go over, like, look, I just had paint on there and I went over that leaf. That's fine. Cause we're going to be doing some other things there. Janice says Eureka Springs. I, is that close? I don't even, I don't even know about that. So that's close to, 
to Branson. Okay, I'm going to keep turning this around and I'm just going around. And do you see how I'm having this rosebud pop up and away because I'm adding this blue around it? You could do this with a paintbrush. I just think that it's kind of fun to use the card. I'm going to leave a little bit of space for a stem. And I'm kind of going around that leaf there. You can, you can go in different directions. You could, you know, have it come out to the edges a little bit. It's in Arkansas. Oh, okay. Never been to Arkansas. So what do you think? Are you going to use a card like this? Or do you think that you will do a brush? Now, one of the ways that you can create a focal point, we want it to be in one of those intersections. And one of the ways that I'm creating a focal point here is contrast. There's a contrast between this blue, which is a little bit darker, and the pink right? Oh, I don't know who just put that on there because I can't see the name, but fingers, that would be fun. Diane says she loves using the cards. This almost feels to me like sculpting. It's kind of like sculpting because it, it's kind of like carving away, you know, out away from the rosebud. But what I'm doing is creating some contrast. So right in here where there's a lot of that lighter blue, I really want to have more contrast. The easiest way to think of contrast is black and white because that's the most contrast. We're not working with black and white. So you want to think about dark and light. This right here, there's too much all the same. So there's not as much contrast. So it looks very flat. So I got more of that dark blue on there and I'm just going to drag that in a couple of places. And you see how just that little bit of darker in there just created more contrast. Do you also see kind of down in here where that starts to look kind of flat because it's all just one color? So I need more white in there. If you start looking at your painting, your artwork, and, and using the idea of contrast and where there's not enough darks and lights, like a light next to a dark, you will dramatically increase the interest in your paintings. So I'm going to come down in here and add just a little bit of that white. This is a super fun technique. And look, I'm even kind of pulling a little bit out in there. And pretty quickly, I carved out the flower. So this is kind of a negative way of, of creating the rose. Jana says she has to try this technique. It's so much fun. It's, it's all about like kind of experimenting. Honestly, when I just did this one, I had never really done that technique before. It was just I, I had an idea of how I wanted to use the tracing. I wanted to use the pink paper, right? We could have done this with the green, but we would have just, you know, carved out and then I just did it on the pink paper. So you might try that when you do your challenge tonight, which is you'll have tonight, tomorrow, and then before I go live at four o'clock on Saturday. So you have a little bit more time to do this challenge. Maybe you could try this rosebud on the green paper. So tell me in the comments, are you going to do this way of a negative kind of technique of creating your focal point on the pink paper or the green paper? Tell me while I take a drink. Are you going to do it on the pink or the green paper? And while you are putting that in the comments, I'm going to get some red and white paint. I think there's a little bit of a lag. Are you going to do this on the pink? Diane says she thinks pink. 
Oh, Nancy's doing yellow. Oh, Nancy, I cannot wait to see that. Yeah, we talked about yesterday. There's so many different kinds and colors of roses, right? Okay. Have you ever used the multi-surface paints? That was the red that I had over here. So, so I have my palette and I have just a little bit of red and white paint. Noreen used purple. You guys, I cannot wait to see the purple. Yvonne says, probably pink, but I'm not committed. That's okay. So, very good. So, um, Noreen, I'm actually going to give you our third envelope today for trying out a different color. So, I'm going to send you the third Happy Mail envelope. So, everybody tell Noreen congratulations. And I'm going to write your name on here. I will probably get all of day one and all of day two mailed out tomorrow. That is a good question. Do yellow roses symbolize friendship? I don't know that I've heard any kind of like symbolism between um, the colors and the roses like that. So that's awesome. My mom might know because she loves yellow roses. So very good. So I think that I'm going to let this dry just a little bit while I show you what I'm going to be doing with this red and white paint here. So I'm going to do the rosebud up here. And I have just a little bit of red and white paint. And what you want is a flat brush. The other way that I'm going to create contrast, and this is a good way to think about whenever you're creating something, you want to be more three-dimensional. Oh, Diane says, yes, yellow roses are friendship. So there we go. I didn't know that. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. The yellow rose of Texas. There you go. That's cool. So I actually just went outside earlier and I got a rose from my knockout rose bush. So I thought that would be kind of fun to have like an actual rose here. So here's what I want you to think about when you are thinking about creating a focal point and when you want something to look three-dimensional, okay? You want to think about what is closest to you and what is farther away. Isn't that pretty, Jana? Because somebody can put this in the comments. Whatever is closest to you is going to be lighter. Whatever is farther away from you is going to be darker. And that is a way to create contrast, light and dark, and make something look more three-dimensional. So down here in the center of the rose there, that is very dark because it's farther away from you. It's not staying in focus every time I move there. It's farther away from you and it's darker. The petals where they curve, those are closer to you those are lighter. If you start to think about contrast and you are thinking about the way that things curve, the way that, you know, just like even like this cup, you know, do you see those highlights on that cup? Because I have a window right here and it's hitting the, the cup. It's not hitting the cup on the sides. It's hitting the cup right here because that's rounded and it's hitting there first. It's hitting that part because that's closest to me. Whatever is closest to you, if you think about making that lighter, it will pop forward. Whatever is farther away from you, if you create it darker, more contrast, lights and darks, it will look like it's farther away. A lot of paintings, a lot of artwork look very flat, very two-dimensional, because there's not enough contrast. There's not enough lights and darks. When I ask you about your takeaway, probably a lot of you, that's going to be your takeaway. <laughs> because it's something that if, if you can learn how to make more contrast, you will start to see that your artwork really starts to look more three-dimensional. 
So having that contrast is really important. So, hey there, Shelly. Oh, Shell. Well, I have two Shellys right here together. Our knockout rose bush we thought was dead. We had a, a late frost and we thought the, so my husband like cut it all back and it has all kinds of blooms on there now. And now I have the other Shelly here too. So yeah, contrast and the lights and the darks. So what I'm going to show to you, we already have the middle. We started by painting the paper yesterday so that we didn't have the white paper because so many of you said that you were intimidated by having the white paper. We already have a medium color on there. So what we need now is the light and the dark. So if you're using purple, you want to use white or a light purple, and you want to use a darker purple. If your paper is already really dark, you, you, might, you might need to do a little bit differently than I'm going to show to you. So I feel like the comments all of a sudden stopped again. So yes, I will move it up there. I want to show you what I'm doing on the palette and then I will, I will move up there. So, oh, good. Yes, depth and contrast. Those are so, so important. If that's the one thing that you practice on creating more contrast so that you have more depth, you will see a lot of improvement in your paintings. So what I'm going to show to you with these two colors, and I will definitely move up the rose in my painting. Let me see if I can get it going this way. Maybe I can kind of show you. I'm going to use a flat brush and I'm going to load up mainly white on my brush. And then I'm going to put just a little bit of red on the end there. So get mainly white on my brush. And then I'm just going to like tap the end of the brush in my red. So Angie, it is the light source. But if you think about the light source hitting whatever is closest to you, then, um, oh, yeah, definitely, Mom. You should come up and see it. You, you'll, you'll know what's closest to you because the light source is hitting it, right? So it works together, definitely. Okay, if I'm looking at, I'm going to start with this kind of bigger area on my rose right here. I know that the center part is going to be lighter. And on the ends where it curves, it's going to be darker. And my darker is that red. So I'm going to line up my red right with the edge there. And I'm just going to bring my flat brush kind of right down to the corner there. Let me show you. And then I'm going to flip my brush so that the red's over on the other side. And I'm going to do this side right here. Oh, I need a little bit more red. And what I like to do to blend that is to use my finger. And because I already had the pink, the medium pink in there, now I've got some of this white. And if I want to put, you know, like a little bit more white in there, I can really make that pop forward a little bit more. But the dark on the edges with that white in the middle where I know that that's closer to me, that is what makes your thing start to pop forward. That's what starts to make them look more three-dimensional. So I'm just going to do a little bit more. Tell me if you have always wanted to try to make your things, your paintings look more three dimensional, because that is, that is one of the ways to be able to do that. Oh, I'm too much red on there. If you feel like you start to get too much paint, you, I always have some paper towels nearby so that I can, you know, wipe off the paint and blend that a little bit. But look how just having that little bit of white in the middle there, the darker red. Now, do you see like right in here, there's not very much contrast to on Saturday. We're going to work on kind of embellishing and 
that's where you're going to kind of add in all the details and refine things. And so we're going to work on that a little bit, but Oh, good, Jana. Yeah. Take and the flat brush makes a difference. And I know it's going to be harder to get into some of these other spots here, but look at this little spot right here. That's definitely where it rounds where that line is. And then this is going to be lighter. So this will be an easier spot right here. I'm going to go ahead and wipe off my brush a little bit because I felt like I had too much red on there. So I just want like a little, little tip of red on there. And you don't want to cover up all of the pink, but look, I'm just going to take that and then I'll just blend it out a little bit. Now I have too much white. Takes a little bit of practice. But do you see what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to put just the red on that edge right there and have that be darker right in there. If you can have a light light next to a dark dark, that's how you're going to start to make things look more three-dimensional. So you can also take red along just the edge of your brush if I wanted to drag it kind of like right in here and make that a little bit darker and maybe even a little bit darker kind of like right in there because that's behind this petal right and i have a lot of paint on there so i always have my paper towels and i'll just i'll just kind of feather that out a little bit you could use your paintbrush too, it or your finger too. That little area in there is pretty small. So I decided to start using my brush. And if I feel like I have a lot of paint on there, I can come back out and wipe some of that off. I'm... I'm making a lot of this darker because it's behind this, right? So all of this in here. And so I might even want a little bit of white. So when we come back in on Saturday, I'll, I'll, you know, pop that forward a little bit more, but you can kind of see where I did the spiral on this one. I have some of the darker and I didn't go probably as dark on a lot of those places in there. But play around with this one. Look at some examples of flowers, whether they are, you know, real flowers, whether they are drawings. Um, I mean, I've taken pictures. I have different drawings that I have, you know, so I have like references for flowers. Find some references for flowers or for roses so you can look at those and notice where they're rounded, it's brighter, it's lighter, and then where it goes away, then it's a little bit darker. So, so Sandy, it is exactly this. It's about the contrast and the lights and the darks. So really have some light lights. Sometimes if you're working with acrylic paints, you have to let them dry so that you can put that pop of white or the brightest color that you have if it's still wet, you're never going to get that pop of that contrast of the lighter color because it's just going to mix in. So you might have to paint in a few other areas and like wait and come back to an area where you really want to pop it forward. And that is definitely if if you can if you can practice doing the contrast and getting that contrast between light and dark, I'm I'm telling you it it will definitely make a difference. I feel like there's a lot of areas still yet in here that I could make light and dark, but I want to show you how I did the leaves with this fun little packing tape that I have. So I'm going to take, and I'll let that dry a little bit. It's pretty much dry because it was pretty thin. And I'm going to take my um, carbon paper again. Oh, I don't even need the carbon paper with this. Oh, 
I'm going to use a Sharpie marker. Let me find my Sharpie marker here. This is, this is, it's a permanent pen. It's a pit artist pen. Oh, there we go. Pit artist pen. And because the packing tape is transparent, you can just trace over it. You could use a Sharpie for this too, though. It's, it's not really staying on there very well. Let's see where my Sharpie is. There, the Sharpie worked better. You could trace the stem on there too. Like if I wanted to do the stem in the green, it doesn't go all the way down there. Oh, it transferred. Some, okay. It transferred some of the paint onto there. So I'm, I'm mentally keeping that up in my head thinking, oh, okay. So if I have paint on some tape, I put it on some paper, it's going to transfer onto there. How could I use that? So I'm cutting out my leaves here. And they don't have to be perfect. If you have some of the black showing, you know, that's fine. If you have uneven edges, that's fine. Because all of that adds interest. You know, if you can get to the point where in your artwork, you let go of things being perfect, there's, there's no perfect anyway, right? You will, you will find a lot more freedom in your artwork and being okay with things. So I have my two leaves here and then it just, it's fun. Okay, here are my two leaves that I cut out. And I'll show you, they just kind of fit in. And I want you to see that there's that pink still behind there. And I can't wait to see what you do with this one because I think that there's a lot of potential here because these are transparent for you to do a lot of things, right? I'm gonna take just a glue stick and glue those on there. But what if you drew some lines underneath there for veins before you glued it on? What if you drew with some markers over top there? What if there are just all kinds of different things that you could try? So I already have a lot of different techniques on here that I have showed to you. And on Saturday at four o'clock, I'm going to show you embellishing, basically finishing. It was like stuck right on there. And I'm going to show you how I finish off both of these pages. Some of the different things that you can do with them. And I'm going to show you a fun way to use the techniques that I've shown you from start to finish and do something larger, to do something bigger, to do, like use everything that you've learned to put it all together. With this one, I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. I'm gonna let this dry. But this is the way of kind of carving a way to get to a focal point. And with the other one, I just want to show you a quick way to use color to make some contrast. And this is going to be kind of more of the positive way of doing a focal point. This is the other one that was on the tracer. So this was the flower down here. You could use this flower if you wanted. You could use the rosebud again if you wanted. But I want you to notice that I have it up in the top left-hand corner of my paper. And what I did, I'm going to show you the technique of how I got color on here. So I'm going to take my little Dollar Tree again, and I'm going to 
whatever you have, whatever you have. I have some Distress Oxide Spray in pink. So I'm going to use some of that. I might use just a drop of red in there, like right in the center. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe that's all that I want. And I'm going to use the actual paper that I printed off for the tracer. And what I'm going to do is smush it. <laughs> There's like a fancy art word for you. I'm going to smush it over top, but I just sprayed on there. It's very similar to what I was doing when I did the packing tape. And I feel like I'm going to need some more paint over on this side, but let's lift it up and see. Ooh, that's kind of fun. And I, I like this kind of out here on the edge. So let's see if I can go ahead and pick up some more paint in some of the areas that I didn't get. That red really goes a long way. I guess it's almost kind of like a reverse printing that I'm kind of doing here. I need a little bit on this petal right here. And I know that it's picking up some of the other colors that are still on the cutting board. Okay, so there is my rose. I, I like how it came out with some darker in the center there. I've got some edges. It went into the leaves, which is fine. And that is what I'm going to use. This dries really quick because it really doesn't have a lot of paint on there. And what I'm going to do is to cut that out. You could do the same idea with images that you get from a magazine. I got a, um, like a garden magazine, like a flower. Um, what, what's the word that I'm trying to, like a, a catalog, like a catalog of flowers. And I ordered one of somebody who does roses. So I'm excited to, to get that one. Okay. This is my green paper that I'm using. This was another one that I had painted with the green swirls. I drew over it with a color pencil and I, um, I use that same technique for some other green. So Diane says, is there something else that you can use if you don't have the distressed sprays? Sure, just use some paint. So just paint some paint on to a plastic surface. I've seen people use plastic bags. I've seen people use um, just any kind of plastic surface that the paint is not gonna stick to. And then when you press the paper onto there, then it's gonna lift up that paint. You could do it on top of bubble wrap. So you could do it on top of bubble wrap and then lift up the paint onto your, your paper. So yeah, it could be anything. And plexiglass, see, I never thought about plexiglass would work, yeah, would work really well, yeah. So this is the green piece of paper that I used and I did that green over top of it. And then I sealed it with some of the gloss medium because I didn't want the color pencil to run. And what I'll do is go ahead and cut out this rose. And I'm not too careful about, have you ever heard it called fussy cutting? I'm not too careful about, you know, going around all the edges and everything because some of the things that we're going to do to embellish on Saturday, that's all going to get covered up anyway. So I just kind of cut really quickly. I'm holding the scissors just pointed straight away from me. And then I just move my piece of paper pretty quickly around. And so there's my rows that I cut out. And then I will use the gloss medium. And I try to have a different brush for the gloss medium. I'm just going to make sure that I rinse it out really well. But what I'm going to do is just dip it into the gloss medium and paint it on there. And 
And let's see. I think I'm going to do this one kind of more towards the bottom right. And then I'm actually going to put the gel medium over top too. And while I'm doing that, I can kind of press out the bubbles. If I felt like I needed to go underneath there a little bit, I could do that. And then I'm just going to make sure I rinse this out really well. Make sure I put my lid on my gel medium. So. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't do a lot of the fussy cutting either. So yeah. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit, but what I'm going to show to you is what I did on this one. So I just used the other flower, the other cutout on there. But you can see I started to cover up some of the outlines and use color for the contrast. So let me show you a little bit more on this one, what I did. And we'll kind of finish up and I will tell you your challenge for today. And I'm going to use some green and I use some blue just for a little bit more contrast in the colors. Which is one of more of the elements of art. And what I'm going to do is start to put paint on here, which I'd already kind of started with this one. I'm going to let this one dry a little bit. I started to put paint by just kind of picking up some of the blue and the green, not really mixing it too much on my brush. And I just started going in here close to the flower and just kind of pulling some paint, which is mainly the blue in there. And see how that's even a little bit darker now and more contrast than what was already there. So it's already starting to pop that flower forward a little bit more. So this one I put up in the top left-hand corner. Oh, I'm really liking that blue. And this is where I can go all the way up to the, the lines that I cut, you know, the lines that are on the, the tracer. And it really starts to carve that out a little bit. And it, it makes the, the rows pop forward even more. So I'm really liking the darker blue because it gives me even more of a contrast. On Saturday, I will be live again at four o'clock. I actually have a paint party tomorrow. I'm doing a painted, a pet your paint, a pet portrait painting party. <laughs> That's really hard because of a lot of C's. And um, that's why I can't do the video tomorrow at four o'clock. But I wanted to go ahead and do these first two rather than waiting until next week. And do you see how I'm pulling out a lot of that, that blue all the way out to the edges there? So if I have a little bit of extra paint, That really, that really helped to pop that, that, um, that flower forward. So Jana says it is a five by seven. This is one of the Grumbacher in and out journals and it's five and a half by eight and a half is the size. You could use watercolor, you could use mixed media paper, any of that paper would work. This is the one that I showed yesterday, which I believe is 110 pounds. This idea of putting the paint using the contrast is another way that you can really make the focal point because that really started to make this flower pop forward. I've got some white on here. So if I wanted to, you know, start to mix some of that in. If I wanted to mix some of the green, you know, I can have some other.
I don't know. I might come back in even with some of the green in there. On Saturday, what we're going to do is to start adding more of the, the refining details. So I'm going to go into this one and probably, you know, pull in some colors to pop it forward a little bit more. But on Saturday, I'm going to show you how to finish it. And how do you know when something is finished? How do you know what to add? How do you know how to pop things forward, where you should add the details, you know, when it's considered finished? Those are some of the things that we're going to talk about on Saturday. Four o'clock Eastern again on Saturday. And um, you'll just need your finished paintings and anything else that you want to add some details. A lot of times I will use my sparkly gel pens. I will use the glaze pens that I talked about yesterday. One of my favorite things is the Uniball White Signo pen. I love doing details with those. Any, any of the more fine point markers, sometimes I even like to use color pencils to finish things off. So on Saturday at four o'clock, that is gonna be the third video. But what I'd like for you to do, part of the challenge, the very first thing is to write your takeaway here in the video. And then I'd like for you to go over into Art Journaling 101. Remember, if you're not in there, just put AJ 101 and I will make sure that I get you over into that group because that's where everybody's sharing. So I want you to share your two roses, whether you do two rosebuds, two of these flowers, whichever they are. You could use both of them with this technique with the card if you want. Just two of your rose papers because you had a pink and a green. So I want you to do the pink and the green. And then make sure that you post that with the hashtag. Somebody can put in the comments again, hashtag C-U-R day two. So day two. And then just like with yesterday, go in and comment on other people's and encourage them and just have fun looking at everybody else's and comment on the focal point, you know, comment on the colors that they use, comment on the contrast that they used. And you can um, comment on three people's posts in there. And what I will do on Saturday is pick another person that wins the another $10 Amazon gift card. So that's what I'm going to do on Saturday. I will draw that person live on Saturday. So I hope that you, oh, thank you. Nancy and Marion both posted the hashtag on there. So yeah, go ahead and share your takeaway here in the video. Share something that you learned, something that was kind of like an aha to you, something that you had never heard of before. A few of you said you had never heard of the elements of art. And put the takeaway in here. And then as you're finishing, you can do one at a time if you want. You can, you know, use the hashtag on both of those and make a separate post as you're getting those finished. But put those in the group so that we can see those because, you know, sharing what it is that you're doing gives other people the courage to also share. And it helps inspire all of us because we see those different ideas and we see how you use color and what colors you used and, you know, what what it looks like on yours and the, um, you know, just the different ideas. So, Avon, if you want to send me a message, I will get that. Or if you want to email me, it is creationsofstudio39 at gmail.com. You can do either one. So, Sandy's saying she learned more dimension. So, that's awesome. Sandy's saying the takeaway is using packing tape and <laughs> jelly press. <laughs> so that's awesome. I appreciate all of you being here today. And thank you again for being patient if you watched yesterday. If you have not watched the replay, just, just go ahead and forward to about minute 20. And you won't have missed anything except a lot of static and echoing and things like that. And me trying to um, get, get past that. So I thank all of you and, oh, you're welcome. She says, thanks. Oh, hey there, Susie. And um, 
I'm looking forward to seeing all of your roses over in AJ 101, in Art Journaling 101. If you aren't in there, just put that AJ 101 in the comments and I will make sure that you're over there so that you can share all of your roses and your focal points in there too. So I'll see you on Saturday.